That's Wednesday, June 26th. Thursday, June 27th. If you're on the East Coast, across the pond, or down under. And this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. Hope you had a great day and night. I am your host, Dave Scott, broadcasting to you live from the Great White North, on top of the sunny mountains of central British Columbia, right here at SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show, including Revolution Radio. If you want to take a listen to our archives, they are free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where you can read up on the SOR Newswire listen to the show live the gavinator has a number of features coming for you very very soon tonight's show is brought to you by the youtube channel i make that mighty moose beard oil company it's 100 percent canadian 100 percent natural T- taking care of beards all around the world visit mighty moosebeard.com and use promo code sor 2019 today Tonight, we start off with a quick update on Butch Witkowski. Many of our listeners have been messaging me daily since finding out Butch had a heart attack on the weekend. So I got some good news. Very, very good news. Butch had quadruple bypass surgery today. There were a couple of blips, but he made it. He made it. He is resting comfortably in hospital and expected to make a full recovery. Yep. Your prayers, your thoughts, your power of healing spaced out radio listeners worked. Our man, Butch Witkowski from Strange Days and UFORcop.com is going to make it through. So I'm very happy to let all of you know that. So send him some love. Send him some love and healing. Continue that. And we'd absolutely love you if you did. Hey, we're getting into some paranormal tonight as documentary filmmaker and paranormal investigator Josh Hurd comes in to tell us about some of the weird and strange stories he's covered. Josh has written six books on the subject of the paranormal, which can be found on his website, joshherd.net. His first book spawned a documentary film series titled A Brush with Evil. Oh, you know we're getting into that. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the SOR Newswire brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Josh Hurd, welcome to Spaced Out Radio for the first time, my friend. How are you? Dave, thanks so much for having me, man. Oh, we're happy to have you here as well. We are very happy to have you here. My friend, tell us how your paranormal road started. How did you get into this field? Oh, man. You know, I was always kind of like, I guess, that weird kid uh, in school, you know, where like the teacher would take us to the library or what have you. And, you know, my friends were all like getting Berenstain bears books and things like that. And I was the kid that was, uh, getting the spooky stories to tell in the dark and all of that fun stuff, you know? So I've always like had an interest, uh, in the paranormal. Now it wasn't until I was about 12 years old or so, um, where I really had like my first series of paranormal experiences. Um, I lost an uncle, uh, who was very, very close to me. I considered him, uh, my best friend. And so, I mean, losing him, he was only 31 years old when he passed away. So it was quite a shock to the family as well. Uh, but there were some very odd things, you know, surrounding his death that really kind of put me on this path of like asking the bigger questions in life. And, you know, that's when I really started to kind of dive into, uh, the works of like Hans Holzer, um, Ed and Lorraine Warren's case files, things like that, uh, parapsychological research, um, which is uh, kind of interesting and, and terrifying and um, weird, <laughs> especially for like a 12 year old kid to be reading that stuff. But uh, I mean, that's what really got me going on this, you know. Josh, when you look back at the experience of losing your uncle at such a young age, and it sounds like just by the way you talked about him that you guys were pretty darn close. Was it a quest for you to try and figure out if he was still there? Because I'm going to assume, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you were brought up in a in a home where there's a heaven and that everybody goes up there and, and to take and you know can come down at any time, take care of people at the loved ones and all that sort of religious type support that we hear about. Sure. Absolutely. And, you know, it is like, I was raised uh, Methodist, you know, um, which is, I mean, a fairly generic denomination as far as, you know, <laughs> that goes, but um, you know, Christian uh, upbringing for the most part, for sure. Um, so yeah, I believed, you know, if you're, if you're a good guy or whatever, you go to heaven, if you're, 
uh, bad, you do nasty stuff or whatever, you go to hell. I figured that was it. It's pretty black and white. If you're not here, you're there in one of those two places. That's it. Um, but, you know, surrounding his death or whatever, it was it was interesting to me because, like, the first experience that I really had um, was uh, like a disembodied smell, which was his cologne. And I thought that was very odd. Um, nobody that I know um, ever wore that cologne. That was just a very distinctive smell that I just associated with him. Um, now, if you want to get into it or whatever, was this maybe my, my brain or my senses kind of playing tricks on me because I missed him so much. Um, and this was so traumatic, um, potentially, but there was so many weird things that were going on just in a few days that, that really made me truly believe that, no, this is him something else is going on something far bigger than anything that we could possibly understand or fathom. Um, and that's what I wanted to try to get to the bottom of. Um, so yeah, I mean, losing him or whatever it did, it sent me on this quest for sure. Um, and just asking the questions. What was the fallback that you had on this? Was, was it the fact that you did take solace that you were getting, you know, messages or, or cryptic smells from him. Did that make you feel better? Did it make you believe in an afterlife a little bit more? It did for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, there was the comfort thing for sure. Uh, smelling his cologne, it was definitely a comfort. Um, I was also at the exact same time, um, almost terrified. Like my body was reacting physically. Um, the whole, like, every hair standing up on end and <laughs> that type of thing, like the, the goose pimples and all of that fun stuff. Um, I was frozen solid when I smelled this. Um, I mean, the entire family had been together for so long, um, you know, and it, it was just too much for me, like too much family stuff, too much crying and all of this. I wanted to just kind of take myself out of the equation. So I went home and, my grandparents only lived um, and my grandparents' house is where everybody was gathered, but they only lived like a block away from my house. Um, so I just walked home, took a shower, did all that fun stuff. And I was like, just trying to just be normal for a minute. And that's when it hit me is after I was already showered and done, I was just kind of moseying around the house and that's when it hit me. And I mean, <laughs> it's so bizarre to think about it, but yeah, I mean, that was really what started me down this path for sure. So as you started investigating this path and realized that this was something that was going to be connected to you for probably your entire life, what made you get into investigation then? What made you start looking a little bit deeper for answers? So that didn't come until later. So I was, reading and devouring everything that I possibly could. Um, Basically just kind of like, uh, you know, exploring some of the different things that other people had already done. And, you know, it really wasn't until I was in college. um, You know, it's, I found a like-minded group of people uh, to kind of associate associate with. Um, people that had the same kind of questions as I did. And it really wasn't until this really cool show came on television called ghost hunters. Um, yes. You know, where these guys are, are just plumbers by day and they go out and they, they're legitimately helping people um, at night. And I was like, man, this is great. Um, and I'm like, you know, the, the tech and the, all the, the fun gadgets and gizmos. I'm like, there's some science behind this too. Um, I'm like, I really want to start reading up on that and getting involved in something like that. And again, like this group of people that I was with, um, you know, we, we called ourselves paranormal investigators or whatever. We were nothing of the sort. (laughs) We were more or less um, almost like thrill seeking for the most part is what it kind of ended up feeling like just because the first sign of anything spooky. And we were like, screw it. We're gone. Like (laughs) we're out of here. (laughs) And we would take off. Um, 
but I mean, we weren't doing anything like residential or anything like that. We weren't actively trying to help people. I think we were just trying to see if we could find anything anomalous. Right. Um, but I mean, yeah, it was really around college, you know, 18, 19, uh, years of age when we really started to, to hit this hard. Were you surprised as you started to delve into this a little bit more that there was so much for hauntings out there? There were so many experiences. And the minute you started opening up yourself to it and started talking about it in public, the more you started learning about how much is truly out there of the weird and strange. Absolutely. And that was one thing that did strike me as odd is we um, had established ourselves on campus as a uh, legitimate uh, campus recognized or college organized and recognized group, Um, which means we also did community service and different things like that because then the college um, would give us X amount of dollars uh, per semester or whatever to use uh, for equipment or investigations at some of the uh, the bigger name uh, locations. Um, but when the school newspaper and the town newspaper started doing articles and stories and things like that on different things that we were up to, the amount of people that were reaching out to us with legitimate problems, that really knocked me for a loop because I didn't think it was that common uh, of, of a thing, of a problem. Now, I will also say that the majority of these people, it was um, pretty standard and the uh, issues and the majority of these things could be explained away. Um, but at the same time, we were also helping them give them peace of mind. Okay. Number one, you're not crazy. Right. But number two, right. You don't have a ghost or you don't have uh, the devil living in your basement or anything like that. Um, you know, it really is just a house settling or, or, or noisy pipes or something like that, you know? Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it was interesting, though. So when you set up your team, how did you learn to, what to do? Was it all based on, you know, what mo- the majority of us did was we watched Ghost Hunters television, figured out what they were doing and like, oh, yeah, I, I, I can do that. I, that seems pretty easy. Is that <laughs> you know, how you did it? Or or did you have other no, people with experience? Well, we really all kind of came in as novices. Right. And, yeah, we had seen like three or four episodes of ghost hunters and thought, oh, you oh, we know everything there. there is to know. Right. Pros. Yeah, absolutely. We got this. We got this. We could do this. I'm like, this is, this will be cake. And it, it came, you know, pretty quick, pretty suddenly or whatever, um, that, okay. A lot of this does seem to be like, we're just going to be sitting in a room talking to a wall, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, hoping against hope that something does happen. I'm like, we're not going to be able to wrap this up in like 43 minutes. Like the guys on TV. Okay. (laughs) This is going to take days and, and weeks and months and all of that now. So that was a pretty quick realization. It's like, okay, we got to throw this away. Now we then were able to kind of develop our own styles individually. Um, you know, some people like, uh, to go in there and use nothing but tech. Other people like to just kind of feel out a room or what have you. I always say I'm about as psychic as a blade of grass, like just not at all. Right. So I, uh, I do rely heavily on my senses and, uh, and different pieces of technology and things like that. Um, Mm -hmm. but I also try to correlate different pieces of, uh, anomalous activity that I may be picking up on tech with how, I may also be feeling physically uh, and try to correlate that as well. So, okay. We, again, I got like, to kind of like, ask. Yeah. I got to, I got to yeah. ask with your, with your, with your team coming on this as a bunch of rookies, not really knowing what's going on. Let, let's have some fun yeah. here. Did, did you have the matching <laughs> shirts? Did you have no, the matching team shirts? No, we never got that far. No, we were oh. really poor college students. No, we didn't true, do that. True. <laughs> we never now, did, did your, any of that. Now, did your team have RIP for RIP or, or ghost or some sort of anagram in there? Death. No. Or... We uh, honestly, like we didn't even really have a name. Like the only thing that we did have was, um, so I guess like for, 
the college or whatever was called Iowa Western. And so it was the Iowa Western ghost hunters. That was it. And so like there was no thought put into it whatsoever. It was just like, okay, yeah, this is what we're going to call ourselves and that's it. Um, so yeah, we didn't get into any of the, of the cool stuff like that or the cool names or any tactical gear or anything like that. No uniforms, no nothing. What about the titles? Did you, did everybody grab their title? Like, okay, I'm volunteering to be <laughs> the skeptic. I'm volunteering to be the tech guy. I'm going to be the, de- the resident demonologist, even though I don't know what that actually means. Did you have that too? <laughs> no, we didn't actually. Like it was kind of nice just because, Again, like we were all just coming into this together. So we were all learning uh, together. And so, no, we never even assigned roles. It was just like, oh, somebody needs to set up this piece of equipment. Okay, you go do that and I'll do this and whatever. So it was really a nice, just kind of a team effort. There was, yeah, it was really cool. It was a good way to spend a Friday and Saturday night on college campus though, right? Dude, oh man, it was more like even Monday through Friday too. Like we should have went to class a lot more than we did. <laughs> it is what it is, right? Yeah, no we kidding. did miss a lot of class. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. Josh Hurd is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We are talking paranormal tonight. Josh, as you started to figure it out on your own, because really you had no training and you figured that you guys would just learn it, what was probably the biggest thing you learned that might be a misconception to those who've never been on a paranormal team? Um, <clears throat> I, you know, there was there was a lot of things that I learned pretty quick out the gate. Um, and one of them, yeah, we're going to talk about later for sure with like a brush with evil and all of that and kind of how that came to be. Um, that was probably the biggest thing is the realization that it's not all just Casper. You know what I mean? There are certain things out there, um, no matter how rare it is, um, as far as phenomenon goes. Um, but there are things out there that don't wish us well. And that was a very big realization pretty dang quick out of the gate so mm-hmm. do you have an example you could share with us as we got about five minutes before we go to break um <clears throat> yeah i mean basically you know we were going to um and I, and i'll get into this more but i mean basically you know we we bit off way more than we could chew as a, as a team uh ultimately you know like i watched some of the most horrific things happen to people that are very very close to me uh, that were on the team who have then completely stopped anything with the paranormal sense. Um, Cause I mean, it scared them half to death basically, but I mean, it ultimately took the work of a priest uh, to rectify this again. You know, we had only seen uh, three or four episodes of ghost hunters. <laughs> like they hadn't covered this. Right. <laughs> so um, it was, uh, it was pretty real, pretty quick. Um, and then obviously speaking more with uh, different mem- members of clergy uh, at how much they actually see this uh, phenomenon and how much they actually deal with this. Um, it was a real eye opener for me, for sure. Um, and again, like I said, we'll, we'll definitely get into that, um, get into that more for sure. Would you mention that you couldn't handle certain cases out there? When it first started happening, was that a little bit of an eye opener for you that this was no longer about fun, but there was a real serious reality to what is going on with the paranormal phenomena? And absolutely, especially when people are involved and and children are involved, for example, you know, and these people want help and you better be darn sure that you can assist them however, um, however they need. Um, they're trusting you, you know what I'm saying? They're coming. Number one, they are coming to you, um, asking these questions and telling these stories and, and probably thinking that they sound absolutely crazy. Um, and it's your job to try to deliver legitimate answers and legitimate help as well. What, what kind of help did you want to provide? basically just solace and any answers, any evidence that we could possibly or potentially obtain 
that was what I wanted to present. And that is what I wanted to then help. And then, you know, from there, again, the different members of the clergy and things of that nature, being able to assist them uh, if they wanted to uh, get rid of anything uh, that they could potentially have in their house, we could help them with that as well, you know? Um, but basically giving them answers, giving them solace, giving them peace of mind, um, that number one, they're not crazy. Number two, this happens more often than we think. Um, and just really trying to provide them with legitimate help. Josh, when you decided that you wanted to get into this and your group decided to, in college to get into this field, did you think it would lead you to where you are today? Not at all. This, this was something that I thought was more of a hobby, um, was going to be more of a hobby. Now, sure, I had a, a definite passion for it um, and wanted legitimate answers and all of that. Um, but in no way did I ever think I'm going to write books. I'm going to uh, make documentary films. I'm going to uh, have the privilege of working with some of the biggest names in the paranormal field. Um, I, never in a million years would I have thought that this all has, could have happened. What do the people around you say that you're involved in all of this? <laughs> You know, at first, <laughs> at first they thought I was nuts, uh, especially my family. Um, I will say I have one of the most uh, supportive uh, wives on the planet um, <laughs> who uh, has always been in my corner and has always supported me no matter what. Um, but, yeah, it took a little bit for, for my family to get kind of on board with this as well. They just kind of thought I was... Oh, there goes, there goes Josh again off on another crazy adventure or whatever. Um, but then they, they kind of started to see the, um, some of the evidence and things like that, that I was presenting. They started to, you know, watch some of the films and all of that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Oh, that's kind of a cool idea that you have there, especially, you know, like, um, you know, different things with like the extraterrestrials or how, um, people are interconnected in some way as a human populace and all of this weird stuff that I've thrown out right. there now over the past few years. But yeah, so now they're kind of more supportive and now they come up to me and they're like, Hey, what are you up to? You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're the popular guy. Now you're the one who they want the oh, autograph from. Hey I Josh, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you to hold on right there, my friend, because yep. we're going to hop out for a quick break here at the bottom of the hour. Documentarian, Josh Hurd, paranormal investigator. We're going to get into some weird, crazy stories coming up here on Spaced Out Radio right after the break. Hey, Spaced Out Radio listeners, it's Dave Scott. I want you to check out a great documentary I'm involved in called Beyond the Spectrum, Mossan's UFO Files. Directed by Darcy Weir, the film follows Jaime Mossan's journey for mainstream journalistic truth in ufology in Mexico. Beyond the Spectrum can be found on Amazon Prime. If you're a member, watch it free. It's worth the watch. Come get spooked at the 4th Annual Forest Moon Paracon in Cedar Woolly, Washington, Saturday, September 28th. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot. Speakers include Mike Morin and Jason Jordan, R. Keith Andrews, and Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. There will be workshops and a VIP roundtable. Get early bird tickets now at fmparacon.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. 
looking for the stories of the strange and weird that you will find hard to find anywhere else? Check out the SOR Newswire on our website. Our writers, led by Captain Shirk, are scouring the world for the oddest and most bizarre stories we can find. Everything from weird crime to suspenseful and paranormal. We're working hard for you to bring you the most intriguing news of your day. Check out the SOR Newswire at spacedoutradio.com today. A timepiece is a reflection of who you are. And what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Are you having encounters with the paranormal, supernatural, or ufological that you cannot explain? Look no further than the SOR Sightlines Report, brought to you by the Experiencers Support Association. This is Ryan Stacey, head of the research association, TESSA. Soon on the Space Star Radio website, you'll be able to file your reports and have them researched for you. We are independent and ready to help Space Star Radio listeners today. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Every night on Space Out Radio, we have places for you to hang out. Hi, this is Carl. Join our SOR Space Travelers group on Facebook for live chat. On Twitter, using hashtag Spaced Out Radio, you can also join us in our Spreaker chat room. Check us out on Instagram at Dave Scott SOR. All of our archives are free on YouTube at Spaced Out Radio. By the way, I'll be watching you at your window until you do. Bye! Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best five dollars a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. 
Coming up this September 21st and 22nd, all UFO eyes will be focused on Toronto for the fourth annual Alien Cosmic Expo. Come listen to some of the biggest names and experiencers in ufology. Travis Walton, Paul Hellyer, Richard Dolan, Paula Harris, Grant Cameron, Randy Kramer, and Spaced Out Radio's own Dave Scott. Tickets are on sale now at aliencosmicexpo.com. Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. Reminder to all of you, if you've missed portions of this show or others, do me a favor. Go check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. And our website is spacedoutradio.com, where the Gavinator is putting some new features in in the next little bit here, so check in often. Right now, you can listen to the show live as well. You can also read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Tonight, we are talking with Josh Hurd. This is one funny dude if you guys could have heard us during the commercial break oh that's where the fun was happening i got a whole new respect for josh before we bring josh back in i I want to give a shout out hey gene in dc how you doing thank you so much for tuning us in give us a call sometime josh's website is joshherd.net josh welcome back thank you so much now right before the break we we, we were we were talking about how th- you didn't understand when you got into the field of paranormal that things could get pretty evil and pretty real very, very quickly. Tell us about what happened that led you to creating the documentary series. So basically, like around like the Halloween season and all that fun stuff, you know, that's really when the the media and all that will start to kind of report on, oh, spooky places around the area. I was attending this uh, this college. It was called Northwest Missouri State University. It's in Maryville, Missouri. Um, and just outside of Maryville, they were uh, reporting on this old abandoned chapel uh, called Workman's Chapel. And uh, a lot of weird things had, had gone on there. Um, we do know um, factually and historically some, some hangings and things of that nature were going on out there. Uh, but a lot of people were reporting um, like a lot of odd things, like kids would go out there, they would drink, they would smoke, they would just kind of like try to escape reality for a few hours doing whatever uh, kids do. And they were, you know, also reporting all this stuff. Um, so, you know, here we are <laughs> as a, a paranormal investigative group or whatever, quote unquote, um, we go out there and, the first three nights, like we went four consecutive nights out there. Right. And the first three nights, there was some odd things that were happening. Sure. Disembodied footsteps. Um, and you know, things of that nature, um, different rocks and, and pebbles being thrown at us. Um, very odd things, but nothing really, substantial like nothing really like that's going to knock you on your or knock you out of your socks you know now it was on the fourth night we went out there and uh my friend tiffany um we you know we get out of out of the vehicles and we notice something very interesting now if you can imagine this chapel it's one single room and there are three windows on each side There are two windows in the back and there is one gigantic opening. It almost looks like a barn. Like it's, it's very resembling like a barn or whatever. And we walk up to the very large entrance of this place. And we notice something very odd that you cannot see into the structure itself. Now, this was a very brightly lit night as far as like the moonlight and everything was concerned You could see everything pretty darn clear, but inside of this chapel, you could see absolutely nothing. It was literally darker than dark. And obviously, again, you know, ghost hunters hadn't covered that. (laughs) So 
we hadn't even set foot inside of the chapel. Now, my friend Tiffany goes right up to the entrance and she crouches down like a, like a catcher in, in baseball or softball. And, and she's commenting on, I can't believe how black it is. And before she even really finishes the sentence, she's struck by something. Now, whatever this was hit her with such a force that if you can imagine yourself kind of crouched down like she was, and then your legs extending out from your body, um, like she was basically making a 90 degree angle with her, with her body. And she flies backwards at least two to three feet. She lands on her, on her butt and she does two backwards somersaults over herself. And then she's lying face down in this pile of gravel, basically that right there was the biggest moment for me. Like the, Oh my God, like, what did I just see? This looked like it was straight out of a Hollywood movie. Like you can't even trust what you just saw, let alone break it down and analyze what you just saw. What we do know is like we got her into, into the, the vehicle and we took off back towards campus. So night four for us, we hadn't even set foot inside of that chapel. Whatever was going on in there did not want us anywhere near. And that was pretty apparent. Now for the next week, um, I should also say that, you know, she was a, uh, Tiffany was a straight A student. Um, she was also, out of all of us, she was probably the most uh, devout uh, as far as uh, religion goes, um, a very strong faith, but she was also a lot of fun. She was a very uh, bubbly, effervescent type of personality, you know, just a lot of fun to be around and a sweetheart. Um, but for this whole week, she never attended a single class. She never left uh, her dorm room, even to go and eat anything like that. Uh, every time that we tried to you know, get her to come out of her room, which it always took the resident advisor, uh, the RA on that floor to, to key in to her room because she wouldn't answer our knocks or anything like that. Um, but she, you know, she would never, never leave, never eat, never anything. She was not herself. Um, so that's when I had to reach out um, because I knew something bigger than any of us was going on. That's for sure. And that's when I reached out to um, a pastor friend of mine from Omaha, Nebraska. And what he described, um, he said, well, she's not possessed. He goes, so kind of take solace in that. I'm like, okay. He goes, but she has been touched by something. She is being influenced by something for sure. But he didn't call it a demon. He called it uh, an imp, which was something that I had never heard before. And the way he described it to me was, he's like, well, let's say the, a demon is the, the right-hand man of, of the devil. And then an imp would kind of be the right-hand man of, of a demon. I'm like, okay. He goes, they're just little peons. He goes, but they can be pretty nasty. And ultimately, it took the work of, of him and us, like, praying and praying over her and all of that um, to... Um, you know, rectify the situation. So, I mean, that right there was my introduction into all of this. Now, <clears throat> there were a few members of that team. They were done after that. They were absolutely finished with the paranormal. They had, right. you know, they had seen all that they wanted to see, had experienced everything that they uh, ever wanted to experience, and they were done. Um, but it was a, a very big reality check. Right. Josh, did you feel responsible for what happened? Very much so. Very much so. Okay. Tell um, us about I that. I still do. I still feel responsible to this day because, you know, out of the whole group or whatever, I always thought, you know, not that I was the, the leader or anything like that, but I thought I was the most passionate about this. I was the one that found the stupid article. I was the one that wanted us to, to go out there in the first place. And I was the one that kept being like, Hey, we should do this again and do this again. And maybe we should go back tomorrow night and try this or, Oh, we should try that or whatever. I absolutely feel responsible. Um, 
And I've voiced that concern, obviously, with all of them. Um, they think I'm crazy for saying it, but I mean, it's still something that I'm going to carry with me, I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. Was she, was she hurt in any way? No, she was not. Um, now, I, I will say this. like After everything was said and done, um, she did go to the hospital um, because I mean, she was severely dehydrated. You know what I mean? And malnourished. Um, um, so, I mean, she did spend a couple days, uh, in the hospital just under, you know, observation and things like that. But I mean, for the most part though, no, she was fine really other than just that. Okay. Did she recall anything during that, that time where she case. wasn't eating or anything like that? See, that was another thing that really shook me the most was she had zero recollection. She quite literally thought it was the same night when she finally like came to, you know, she thought it was basically the same night that it was a week prior, which made no sense to me. Um, like the entire concept of time was gone. It was absolutely gone. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And I will say like, you know, she did a lot of sleeping. And again, like, like that's all, all that she really did was she was just in, in her room, in her bed. And that was it. Like, it's just, Oh my God, man. So bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. Um, so after all of that, you know, kind of went down, I switched, I switched colleges. Um, now the reason I switched colleges is another book like in and of itself, which I have yet to even write, but I mean, that has nothing to do with the paranormal and everything to do with some really weird stuff. But, um, I switched colleges and that's when I met the, you know, my current, uh, band of brothers or whatever, you know, um, but I had basically one night, you know, we had established another paranormal group and all of that stuff. And so we're sitting around one night and I was telling them that story that I just was telling you and naturally being young and, and dumb and in college and impressionable and all of that. The first things out of their mouth is, Oh dude, we want to go. <laughs> I, uh, I guess peer pressure uh, and all of that. Like, I really didn't want to go back. Um, but yeah, we ended up going back to Workman's Chapel with me. Of course you did. And of course I did, right? And this is, you know, exactly why I titled the, the book, you know, when, when ghost hunting goes wrong, <laughs> a brush with evil. Uh, and uh, it was the exact same scenario, bro. Like the first three nights, nothing absolutely nothing really noteworthy the fourth and final night it was dark in the church yet again now this time i mean we were almost expecting it right this time we decided to take it a step farther we were going to gather um by the main entrance of the chapel itself and one at a time walk inside and spend 10 minutes alone. Now, obviously your buddies are just a few feet away, right? But you're still somewhat isolated. Now, what was interesting is we all went through and nothing really happened at all, other than the fact that we were psyching ourselves out. Now, my buddy Blake goes in. Um, Blake was the last of us, you know, to do this. <clears throat> Blake goes in and he starts hearing very odd things. And thank God Blake was holding a digital recorder at the time. So we have this um, and we, you know, have this documented or whatever, but you start to hear very odd things. Like it almost sounds like log chain being drug across this uh, wooden floor. You hear very heavy footfalls on the wood planks and things of that nature. <laughs> and then my buddy, Mike, you hear Mike, walk in and he says here josh wanted you to have this and it was an emf detector because all of the things that were going on in there i'm like surely this thing is going to just be humming right <clears throat> you hear blake on the audio say i want to leave 
And Mike says, okay, let's get out of here. And Blake says, I think that might be a good idea. Now, in between their little conversations, there's a very, very uh, distinct Class A EVP and a very odd, gravelly, dark, nasty voice that just says, you're dead. And so you hear, it was very, very weird. Now, obviously, we didn't hear that until the next day. Um, But you hear Mike kind of shuffle and turn, and then you hear two uh, distinct footfalls, that is Mike walking towards the exit, <clears throat> and then you hear a very god-awful sound, which was like a choking sound and a big whoosh of air. Now, that choking sound was actually my friend Blake <clears throat> being pulled out of the window. Um, both of his feet came up and kicked Mike square in the butt, um, but Blake goes out the window. Again, very Hollywood style to the point where, again, you don't even believe it. Now, if it weren't for the audio and everything that we have, like, I, I still wouldn't even believe it to this day. Um, it's very hard to get. Now, I will say Blake wasn't influenced at all, um, like what Tiffany went through. Um, but. You know, he was kind of banged up, obviously, and all of that fun stuff. Um, But I'm telling you, like, getting Blake to do anything in the paranormal was very, very hard. He did did come back and do the first film with us, which took a month worth of me begging him uh, to get on board with the film. Um, And then the other two films that have come after that, uh, he didn't want anything to do with, you know, it was, <laughs> he said he was going to show up and then he just never did. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, again, Blake just kind of would, admires would, from afar. Would you consider this experience to be pretty traumatic for the entire team? Not just yourself <clears throat> considering, so, I mean, by the, by the way, you're, you're, you're explaining things. This seems to have yeah. affected you on a very personal slash emotional level. It, um, it did a lot of things to me, man. Like, honestly, um, yes. Like every single one of us <clears throat> has been affected in some way by this. Um, I still, uh, to this day <laughs> will wake up in the middle of the night screaming, like basically reliving that. Um, now, it is kind of interesting too, because my wife is actually a, a combat vet. She spent uh, over a year in Iraq. She's supposed to be the one with, you know, the PTSD, you know, not, not me, not some, some weirdo ghost hunter, you know, from Iowa. Um, but I don't know. It's almost like some paranormal PTSD thing, but you know, honestly, man, like that's the only reason, <clears throat> excuse me. That's the only reason why I wrote the book. Um, it was therapeutic. Um, I wanted to get this stuff, you know, off my chest. Um, you know, from there, <clears throat> from there, it was, um, uh, you know, other people had, had read the book. It was, you know, received fairly well or whatever. And I was approached, um, uh, by some friends who were documentary filmmakers and they said, you know, they wanted to turn it into a film. Now that was my introduction and into, into the world of filmmaking. You know, I kind of caught the bug, uh, so to speak, but I mean, that's the only reason why we did the film was to basically take that team back to workman's chapel for four consecutive nights, actively trying to elicit some kind of a response from whatever that negative entity is. Um, And ultimately at the end of the day, when it was all said and done, put this crap behind us once and for all. um, And finally say like, goodbye, we're done with you. We're bigger than you. You're, you're not going to influence us anymore. You're not going to affect us anymore. Um, This was us trying to gain closure in some way, but it was fairly interesting, man. Like, even in the last scene of the movie, you know, we're in side of this chapel. And as I like 
I'm saying it's time to go. We're, we're going to wrap up. We're, we're done. This is your final chance to say anything, do anything, throw anything. And what we kept hearing was like these very high pitched cries, like a type of noise. It was very, very odd, but it was definitely coming from inside the chapel for sure. It was scaring the crap out of Blake, you know, but it was almost like every time that we said we're gone, it kept pulling us back just a little bit more pulling us back. And that's exactly what it wanted to do. It's like, no, we see what you're up to, but we're, we're going to keep dragging you along as long as we possibly can. So it's, uh, you know, it's one of those places, man, again, like I would, I would drive there right now. It's only 90 minutes away from where I stand. And I struggle with this all the time. I cannot go back to that building. You know, I just don't want to. Um, and it, it's very, very odd how sometimes, you know, things just creep into your brain. And they're like, come on back, man. Just one more time. <laughs> you know? but, well, I, I was actually uh, going to ask you that. Yourself. I was actually going to ask yeah. you that. So we got about 90 seconds to go before the break. We had a guest on last year named Nelson Dellis, who almost died three times on Mount Everest trying to reach the summit. Wow. Wow. And to this and to this day, he still hears uh, the mountain calling him in his dreams. My gosh! Like it's like there's this supernatural ability of of Everest that does that. So that's why I'm asking yeah. you, you. You're saying that you keep hearing this house calling you. That's yeah. almost along the same lines, man. Absolutely, and it, you know it's it's funny. Like I wrote uh, my second my uh, my second book. Uh, is called Haunting the Hunters, um, and it's all about that. What is it about these specific locations or these different locations, and we all have our own, you know, that why is it that we just can't get enough? You know, so I really dive into that question, like what is it? What is the antecedent of that, of that want, that desire, right? So it's very, very interesting stuff, but, I mean, at the end of the day, it kind of boils down to, no matter if it was a good experience, bad experience, or what have you, that's as close as you have ever come to touching, interacting, smelling um, the other side, right? And that's what pulls us back, ultimately. That's a pretty deep analogy, my friend. But when we come back from the break at the top of the hour here, I want to get into this spirit. What do you think it is? Is it demonic? Is it a heavy spirit? Is it something more? Is it very malevolent or just angry i want to break this down what does it look like how does it feel to be around it let's find out more josh hurd is our guest tonight on spaced out radio you can check out his website joshherd.net that's joshherd.net hour two of spaced out radio coming on up We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. out with Spaced Out Radio, where we own the night. This is Carl. You can follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, and during the show, use the hashtag Spaced Out Radio to chat with us live. On Instagram, at Dave Scott SOR. On Facebook, give our page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. SOR archives are free on YouTube at Spaced Out Radio. Come join us, or I will come join you. See you at your window. 
Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. Canada's largest UFO conference is ready to roll in Toronto this September 21st and 22nd at the Alien Cosmic Expo. This year is about the experience. Listen to the stories of Dave Scott, Travis Walton, Paula Harris, Grant Cameron, Ryan Stacey, Richard Dolan, Leslie Mitchell-Clark, and more. Get your tickets now at aliencosmicexpo.com. Find your escape where time has no limits. It's about living today and cherishing the heritage of yesterday. A spirit of adventure for what is new with the nostalgia of the past. Your timepiece is a reflection of who you are. Life surrounded by beauty from the world around us to the soul within. EscapeWatches.com There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Hey fans, it's Dave Scott. Do I have something for you to check out? A great documentary about legendary Mexican investigative journalist Jaime Mossan and his search for the truth about UFOs. Beyond the spectrum, Mossan's UFO files can be found on Amazon Prime. It's free to watch if you're a member. You might even hear me in it. So check out Beyond the Spectrum only on Amazon Prime. The Call of the Wild is in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is one of the hottest bars and restaurants in the city. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose will rock you like a hurricane all night long. Great food with everything on the menu at $6.95. Near the corner of Nelson and Granville, get your horns up and come rock with us. The Moose Vancouver, the official rocking bar of Spaced Out Radio. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Are you having encounters with the paranormal, supernatural, or ufological that you cannot explain? Look no further than the SOR Sightlines Report, brought to you by the Experiencer Support Association. This is Ryan Stacy, head of the research association, TESSA. Soon on the Spaced Out Radio website, you'll be able to file your reports and have them researched for you. We are independent and ready to help Spaced Out Radio listeners today. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? At spacedoutradio.com, we have a little bit of everything for you to stay up late. So while you're there, check out our SOR Newswire, where our team brings you stories of the weird and strange to the WTF from around the globe. News on Bigfoot, UFOs, paranormal, Darwinian-type crime tales. It's the stories that the mainstream media usually won't touch. Well, we got them all on the SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today.
Come get spooked at the fourth annual Forest Moon Paracon in Cedar Woolly, Washington, Saturday, September 28th. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot. Speakers include Mike Morin and Jason Jordan, R. Keith Andrews, and Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. There will be workshops and a VIP roundtable. Get early bird tickets now at fmparacon.com. We are getting ready to relaunch the SOR Space Travelers Club at spacedoutradio.com. For $5 a month, you can join us for a plethora of features found nowhere else. Hang out in a private chat room during the show and after party. You can check out some exclusive content and a store specifically for you, as well as a private listener forum where you can post your thoughts, stories, and pictures. The SOR Space Travelers Club, coming soon to spacedoutradio.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. The freedom to post what you want, when you want. That's the social media freedom you need. Social media freedom is the free app in your app store. No need to worry about going to jail or being shadow banned any longer. It's the freedom to say what you feel. The freedom to know Big Brother isn't watching. It's the way social media is supposed to be. Social media freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Download from your app store today. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Welcome back to hour number two on Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for being with us. Tomorrow night on the show, cryptid hunter Eric Altman joins us. We're talking Bigfoot, Dogman, all sorts of weird stuff running around in the forests of North America. 906 Pacific, 1206 AM Eastern at spacedoutradio.com. Hi to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates, KDUN AM 1030 in Reedsport, Oregon, KDNF AM 1560 in Dangerfield, Texas, down in Noonan, Georgia, WQEE 99.1 FM, UPRN 107.7 FM in New Orleans, and in Ridgecrest, California, KZFX 93.7 FM. Yeah, Chuck hates it when I say that, KZFX. 93.7 FM. On the digital side, we are happy to be a part of the Revolution Radio family. Thank you so much for tuning in to us. Don't forget, all of our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash space out radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Thysiastery. Thysiastery is your password. Nobody knows what it means. But the clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where soon we will have a plethora of features for you. The Gavinator's working on that, so check in often. But right now, you can catch the SOR Newswire, listen to the show live, and we got more coming very, very soon. We introduce Josh Hurd to you tonight. He is a paranormal investigator. He is also someone who has filmed a really cool documentary series about the evils of the paranormal. His website, joshherd.net. Josh, welcome back to the show. Thank you much, man. Thank you. Not a problem. Not a problem. Right before the break, we started talking about this evil spirit entity, whatever you want to call it, at this house that is calling you back. Tell us about this evil entity. Has anyone ever seen it? And if so, what is it? The only thing, the only one of us really in the group, you know, that has claimed to have seen anything that they then associated with, that's what this evil is, um, <clears throat> was a very tall, a very black uh, figure that resembles like a woman. Um. Um, with very long hair. It's either a woman or like Rob Zombie or something. I don't know. <laughs> but um, 
crazy stuff. Um, now, the the person that was doing or experiencing this was actually my brother. Um, he said that he had received a name. And I'm like, were you asking for the name? He said, no, that he wasn't asking for the name at all. Um, now, the name, <clears throat> after doing more research and all of that, um, is definitely um, a, a demonic you know, name or what have you. Um, it was kind of interesting, too. So not even realizing all of this, but, you know, we started to do, like, uh, pitch videos and things like that. Um, you know, we were taking the film on tour and all of that after it was said and done. And so we went uh, to the chapel and we were filming different B-roll shots and things like that for these pitch videos. And <clears throat> one of the crew members came out and said, hey, you know that name that James was mentioning? And I said, yeah. It's, you know, we never really speak you know, speak the name really. And he goes over to this one little section of wall inside the chapel, which is also <laughs> kind of funny because it's right next to the same window that Blake was thrown out of, but there's that name and it's etched into the wall, but it was done so with a pocket knife with a very fine blade. And you can barely even see it's there. Like for this guy to just happen upon that, that's so weird and inconspicuous. Like nobody would even see it from three feet away. Like for him to find that and see that and point that out to us was really, really weird. Um, a little serendipitous at the same time. Uh, but it was enough to freak us out to the point where we just said, Oh, we got enough B roll, you know, for the day. But I would definitely say it's something demonic for sure. Whatever this is that, uh, is there somehow maybe tied to the land itself? Um, but nasty, whatever it is, absolutely nasty. Being, being there and hearing the creaks and the footsteps and the bangs and all that stuff is, is nothing. You'll, you'll absolutely know when, when this thing, when this entity is around. Like everything, everything shifts, everything changes, uh, atmospherically, uh, you can feel it. You can absolutely feel it. And again, like I never will claim to be psychic in any way, shape or form at all. Um, but something does change atmospherically. Um, but it's, it's absolutely being in the presence of evil itself for sure. Does it usually attack? Have other people who have been in that <clears throat> place, whether they're investigating or not, been attacked by this? Some, some people have. Um, so it's it's kind of an interesting concept, right? So when we made the film, obviously the last stop on the tour for us was Maryville, Missouri. We wanted to end. And the, the tour right where we basically started the whole thing and uh, the town loved it. They went nuts uh, for it, but it was, um, you know, also our intent in the film to have people stay away from that. Now, um, obviously the exact opposite happened uh, and more people started to go out, uh, out there more often um, which again was not, not our intention at all. Um, in fact, now that they've made it as such that if you are caught on property, you are to be arrested on site. Um, so I would advise against going out there, you know, to anybody. Um, <clears throat> however, it is interesting because only certain people do experience something like that, something that evil. And it's usually when they're in there uh, numerous times and they are actively searching and uh, maybe poking the bear a little bit, right? Um, not necessarily antagonizing, but I guess that's the only word I can find at the moment. <laughs> but um, but it's, it is interesting. Now, like, 
it, it's a concept that I've been kicking around for quite some time. In fact, we, when we did a brush with evil three, we actually just released a brush with evil three at the end of March of this year. Um, that was something that really played a big role in that film is group dynamic. And what is it about group dynamic? Like I always, I give the example, my wife and I will go to a, a grocery store. We'll get our groceries. We'll come home and everything is fine. But if I walk into the exact same store with this group of guys that I'm usually with, like things are literally like flying off the shelves in front of us, behind us, the lights are flickering on and off above us. What is it about group dynamic that may then elicit more paranormal activity? And maybe there's something to that. Um, you know, I own uh, and operate a haunted location here in Iowa that's called Malvern Manor. And I see this all the time now. Some groups come into Malvern Manor and they have some of the most profound experiences they've ever had. And other teams have come in and they experience nothing. And I always ask myself, why is that? <laughs> you know, like, what is it with that? Um, why that would be? And I do think there's something to that, to that, uh, to that idea of group dynamics. Right. For sure. Josh, why do you think this spirit gets set off? Whether it's demonic, whether it's just angry. What do you think is setting it off? Have you figured out that pattern yet? It, honestly, I, I honestly believe that religion is a part of it. Um, I, like, before I go in anywhere, you know, like, I usually say a little prayer. It's usually just to myself or whatever, but I'll throw up a prayer. I'll throw up a prayer after I'm done or whatever. Um, but that's just me. You know, everybody does their own thing. But we are not necessarily religious or anything like that. But at the same time, I would say that we are fairly strong in faith as a group. Um, and it does seem to kind of be the antecedent of that place for sure. So do you try and keep that to yourselves or do you think like many paranormal investigators who believe that they are a little bit intuitive going in, maybe not psychic, but just intuitive, aware, if we could put it that way, do you think this sure. thing, whatever it is, is aware when you guys are coming in and when you guys are going to be investigating? I think, yes, like that place and or that entity or what have you is usually about five steps ahead of you at all times. It knows exactly when you're coming and what you've got planned. Um, that's exactly what I think. Interesting. Interesting. So why do you feel that? What puts it on you with those feelings? Well, <clears throat> like for example, like when we were uh, shooting the first film, I had all of these grand ideas, right? I wanted the film to, to look very cinematic uh, in nature. And I, I realized like, oh, it's a documentary film, but I, want it, I don't want it to appear like a doc. I want it to look very cinematic in nature. So we had, um, we had 12 uh, crew members that I was flying in from California. Um, and they were all very gung ho about the project and all of that. Um, they all read the book and then quite literally 24 hours before we were to begin filming half, like literally half of this crew quit up and quit said, no, we want nothing to do with this. And they were done literally everything that could have gone wrong with this project went wrong. The, it's the only reason we even shot the dang film was because I'm so, I'm so stubborn <laughs> when it comes to this stuff. Mm -hmm. I am so stubborn. Um, and I wanted to push and I really, really wanted to push and I wanted us to be back and have that closure. Right. But even some of the shots and all of that stuff, we had rented out like a, a U-Haul truck uh, one of those big, I don't even know, like 40 foot type jobs or whatever. And that basically became the nerve center on wheels. You know what I mean? And 
we could put that wherever we wanted and still see and hear what was going on inside the chapel. Well, it was funny because all of the cameras and things that we had set up, the cameras would get turned like 180 degrees turned. Um, Some of them would just get fried and die entirely. And it wasn't like, Oh, they lost battery power or anything like that. No, something literally zapped them out of existence. Like you cannot use this camera ever again. Um, It was messed up, but again, everything that went wrong, you know, that could have gone wrong, did go wrong. And I, I totally attribute it to all of that, all of that. My father, for God's sake, even like, the first, the first day that we were filming, my father was hospitalized. Something, and I mean, it was bad to the point where they thought I was going to have to stop the filming process to go to the hospital to, to say goodbye to him. Um, now, luckily, that, that didn't happen. Um, so I was still able to go to the hospital and and be by my dad's side for a few hours uh, and then get back to work. Um, But everything that was trying to, it was just trying to pull me away. Like, now you really don't want to do this. Now look Mm -hmm. at all everything that's gone wrong. You know, Uh, is it really worth it at this point? You know, all these people just quit. All this stuff is screwed. Like, uh, is it really worth it? You know, it's just crazy, man. Way too much to be coincidence. I, I would suggest, yeah, absolutely. I would absolutely suggest that. It, it's funny, too. Like, even, <clears throat> excuse me, even when we were filming then, we had this really cool location um, because I wanted to open the film up with, with a ghost hunt. This is who we are. This is how we do it. A very broad stroke thing. And then get into the meat and potatoes of the story, right? But introduce the team through uh, uh, an investigation. So we had right. this really cool place in Malvern, Iowa, and it's called the classic cafe and the classic cafe has its own slew of paranormal happenings. And so they were nice enough. They said, yeah, bring the crew. Let's do this. You guys can investigate here and all that stuff. Now we got there, we got set up and all that. And I didn't realize there's a bar that's attached to the classic cafe. Now this was a Friday night. So, uh, small town, Iowa on a Friday night, uh, it must've been a really long week for these guys because they were having a lot of fun. So it was way too loud to uh, do an investigation. So I went outside and I was smoking what I call my angry cigarette. Right. And so I'm trying to come up with a plan B because night one of filming now for all intents and purposes is screwed. It's done. And I meet this guy and he was like, Hey man, what's up with all the cameras? And I'm like, Oh God, like, this is where I'm going to lose people, right? Usually. I'm like, he's either going to think this is really cool or he's going to think that I am a, a nut job. So I told him what we were doing and all that fun stuff. And he goes, oh, that's kind of cool. He goes, you know, I own this building. He goes, you know, we don't do anything with it. It just kind of sits there. But some weird things happen every once in a while. I don't really believe in this stuff. He goes, but there's some things that have happened that I really can't explain away. And he's like, yeah, this place is... Uh, 10,000 square feet. It used to be a hotel. Then it was a nursing home. And then it was more or less a group home for uh, mentally handicapped people. And he's like, I'm like, that sounds amazing. You know, where is this place? And he's like, Oh dude, it's just right there across the street. And he was nice enough to let us in to this monstrosity of a building. And what we didn't realize at the time was this building that we were just walking into was the building that I would then one day own and begin to call Malvern Manor. So with all the negative crap that was going on that day, the first 10 minutes of that film is quite literally us finding what we now call Malvern Manor, which is the building that, you know, I I own and operate um, for paranormal investigations. So again, not necessarily coincidence. You know, there was so much stuff that was going on with that project, like looking back on it now, it's just, it's mind boggling, honestly. No kidding. We only got Mm -hmm. about three and a half minutes here before we got to go to break at the bottom of the hour. Getting back to this malevolent spirit, 
that has been haunting you, your crew, and anybody who gets near it. Have you yeah. ever photographed it? And the reason I why I not. ask that is I run a ghost tour up here, and we have mm-hmm. one spirit where we photographed him twice. He is so upset wow. about that that we're not even allowed up in his area now. Otherwise, he's fit to attack. Oh, he is wow. fit to attack. And we've cut a deal. Wow. I have to leave him I have to leave him a cigarette and a shot of whiskey for every ghost tour we do. Dude, but yeah, I just do the way that it is. Second. Absolutely. Yes. That is outstanding, man. That is freaking Don't outstanding. Want. Don't want to, but have to. <laughs> no, I and I've thought about doing that. You know, some of the the gadgets and gizmos now have uh, really upped their game. And I would love to cruise in there again with infrared cameras and all of this tech and, and toys and just wire the whole place. Um, but again, I just, I don't know. I don't have the guts to do it. I think honestly, it's like, yeah, I'd probably do it. But at the same time, do I want to do it? You know, I'm kind of afraid of the repercussions and I certainly don't want to, um, you know, relive any of that crap again. That's for sure. Do you plan on going back to that house? No, I don't plan on it. (laughs) I think that uh, eventually I'll make my way there. Yeah. I mean, even for like a brush with evil three, there was one shot that I wanted to do because when we were filming the first, uh, the first film, there was no such thing as like a drone with a camera. We had to rent a cherry picker, you know what I mean? And get really cool right. aerial shots that way. Um, and move the cherry picker with some dude like strapped in as tight as we could get him. Um, but you know, we had to go back for, and we just stood like, we never even set foot on the property. We just stood on the road and got some really cool drone shots um, of the chapel. We even flew it inside the chapel and backed it out and all sorts of fun stuff. But man, like even being back there and just standing on the road uh, in front of the property, I was just like, Oh my gosh, man, like you can just feel it. You know, <laughs> it's like, uh, it's just ridiculous. Even turning onto the road, driving up to it. You're just like, man, what am I doing? It's just crazy. We got about 30 seconds left before we go to break. How do you protect yourself? How do you make yourself safe? You know, usually all I, all I do is I will, you know, Lord, watch over me, watch over my friends, watch over my loved ones, you know, as, as we go and do this, that's it. That is literally all I say. That's it. It's super simple, straightforward and to the point, but it usually seems to, to do the trick, you know, um, at the end of the night, you know, it's usually, I, I just throw up another prayer. Thank you. You know, thanks for, for watching over me. Thank you for not allowing anybody to, to get hurt or anything like that. So, I mean, don't, don't I, I keep you. it simple. Yeah, don't, just keep it don't simple. Don't blame me, my friend. Josh, you hold on. We're going to take a break at the bottom of the hour. Josh Hurd is our guest tonight, paranormal investigator, documentarian. JoshHerd.net is his website. We'll be back with more Spaced Out Radio right after this. Hey, Spaced Out Radio listeners, it's Dave Scott. I want you to check out a great documentary I'm involved in called Beyond the Spectrum, Mossan's UFO Files. Directed by Darcy Weir, the film follows Jaime Mossan's journey for mainstream journalistic truth in ufology in Mexico. Beyond the Spectrum can be found on Amazon Prime. If you're a member, watch it free. It's worth the watch. Coming up this September 21st and 22nd, all UFO eyes will be focused on Toronto for the 4th Annual Alien Cosmic Expo. Come listen to some of the biggest names and experiencers in ufology. Travis Walton, Paul Hellyer, Richard Dolan, Paula Harris, Grant Cameron, Randy Kramer, and Spaced Out Radio's own Dave Scott. Tickets are on sale now at aliencosmicexpo.com.
Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. A timepiece is a reflection of who you are. And what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Every night on Space Out Radio, we have places for you to hang out. Hi, this is Carl. Join our SOR Space Travelers group on Facebook for live chat. On Twitter, using hashtag Spaced Out Radio, you can also join us in our Spreaker chat room. Check us out on Instagram at Dave Scott SOR. All of our archives are free on YouTube at Spaced Out Radio. By the way, I'll be watching you at your window until you do. Bye! Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Looking for the stories of the strange and weird that you will find hard to find anywhere else? Check out the SOR Newswire on our website. Our writers, led by Captain Shirk, are scouring the world for the oddest and most bizarre stories we can find. Everything from weird crime to suspenseful and paranormal. We're working hard for you to bring you the most intriguing news of your day. Check out the SOR Newswire at spacedoutradio.com today. Are you having encounters with the paranormal, supernatural, or ufological that you cannot explain? Look no further than the SOR Sightlines Report, brought to you by the Experiencers Support Association. This is Ryan Stacey, head of the Research Association, TESSA. Soon on the Space Star Radio website, you'll be able to file your reports and have them researched for you. We are independent and ready to help Space Star Radio listeners today. Come get spooked at the 4th Annual Forest Moon Paracon in Cedar Woolley, Washington, Saturday, September 28th. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot. Speakers include Mike Morin and Jason Jordan, R. Keith Andrews, and Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. There will be workshops and a VIP roundtable. Get early bird tickets now at fmparacon.com.
Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best $5 a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. We pass the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for tuning us in on Hump Day. Thursday for some of you. Still Hump Day here on the West Coast. Reminder, if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can always go to our YouTube channel, listen to our archives for free. Just type in Spaced Out Radio, hit that subscribe button. We'd appreciate that. And... Our website is spacedoutradio.com. You can read up on the SOR Newswire put together by Captain Shirk. Listen to the show live. we got more features coming. The Gavinator is building the site feverishly. We don't use that word enough on this show. Feverishly. There we go. Maybe that could be a password one night. We'll see. All right. We have Josh Hurd on tonight with us on Spaced Out Radio. He is a paranormal investigator, documentarian. Josh, welcome back to the show. We'll throw out your website What's once up? again. JoshHurd.net, if you want to check it on out. Thanks, bud, for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you. A lot of paranormal investigators today are really, really segregating themselves from the rest of what's going on, staying away from the UFO field, staying away from the cryptid field. But there seems to be more and more people, Josh, who are starting to notice a tie-in between all of these different subjects of the weird and unknown. Are you noticing that as well? And if so, how are you <clears throat> reacting to it? You know, I uh, it, it's so funny that you mentioned this because, yes, like, absolutely, yes. Um I was approached, I was approached by my buddy, uh, David Glidden. Uh, David is another, uh, documentarian, um, and, you know, you know, filmmaker and all that. Um, but he approached me and, you know, asked me if I wanted to do a project with him called into the light. And it was an exploration of the phenomenon that we call the spook light, which is just a disembodied light that is experienced all over the world, really. Um, <clears throat> it, it's, it's a fascinating subject. Um, now, he lives in Missouri, in, down south in Missouri, uh, near Joplin, which is known for the Joplin spook light. Um, a fascinating story. And so I'm like, absolutely, we will check this out, which means I'm going to have to go spend some time in nature and wilderness and all that stuff. I'm not much of a camper or an outdoorsman, but dang it, I'll learn, you know, <laughs> so... I uh, agreed to do the project and um, <clears throat> throughout this project or whatever, it took us to this place uh, in Arkansas, uh, which is called the board camp crystal mine in Mina, Arkansas. And right. it was a fascinating place watching different video surveillance footage that they had of these giant boulders being moved by something unknown um very very interesting um a lot of ufo activity out there as well but they were also experiencing these different little spook lights or these disembodied little lights that would just kind of flash around and zoom around and sometimes approach you and they almost seem to have some form of intelligence to them um which fascinates me even more but while we're out there doing our thing um 
we witnessed something in the sky. Absolutely. That was anomalous. Um, and over that same area on that same night, numerous other people had the exact same, uh, eyewitness accounts, which was amazing to me. Now, <clears throat> while we were out there as well, this gentleman, <clears throat> his name is Orville. He runs the place and he's showing us around and he starts talking about the forest people. And I go, hold on. <laughs> Number one, I'm camping out here. Okay. You start talking like forest people and stuff. I'm like, um, like what's going on here? Like he's talking about basically what we would consider to be like a Bigfoot, a Sasquatch, what have you. Right. And we're out there doing our thing and he's walking us around and telling us this area over here is what we call the nursery. And I'm like, why is this called the nursery? He goes, well, take a look around. He goes, has any of the other bits of forest looked like this? And I'm like, well, no, actually, this seems to be uh, a little bit messier, I guess is a good term for it. He goes, yeah, exactly, messier. This is where the adolescents are training how to become, I guess, better squatch. I don't know, like squatchier. I don't know. <laughs> like, but we don't, regardless. Just so you know, we, we don't, don't squatch know. around like, here. We don't squatch around here. That was it. <laughs> but it was interesting. So <clears throat> I put myself later that night all alone in the nursery. So there is 40 acres of forest here and it's very dense and very thick. And Dave put himself on the other side. I'm all the way off in the nursery by myself. The only thing we got is walkie talkies and we each have a camera. As I'm walking through a very large something landed right behind my foot. And I can only say this is more like not, not a rock. This is more like a big stone for sure, but it lands directly behind my feet. I'm like, okay, freaked me out pretty good. Something else whizzed by my ear. Now to the point where I could hear this thing whip right by me and then land in the forest just behind me. Whatever this was, was missing me and missing on purpose is what it felt like missing me on purpose. Um, almost like it was a warning right? Like, okay, bro, that's enough. Now it's time to get out of here. Like, I didn't, trust me, I booked it out of there because I wasn't a big believer in Sasquatch or anything large and bipedal that we haven't somehow magically found, right? So a lot of people would ask me, what do you think of Bigfoot? I'm like, eh, never met the dude. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. I would also say that now I am 100% a believer just from that experience. But seeing the different things like the spook lights, the UFOs in the sky, and then just a few hours later, having this encounter with something intelligent in the woods like that, there is something else definitely going on. And I mean, a lot of people refer to like the, the unified paranormal theory, right? Like how everything is somehow connected in some way and there is something that is kind of pulling the strings, right? But ghosts, UFOs, angels, demons, the whole nine yards is all from the same source. And that's a fascinating thought to, to entertain, right? Very much so. Very much so. I freaking love it. So when it comes to doing the ufo lookout or walking through forests trying to find sasquatch or fairies or gnomes or or sprites yeah. or whatever it may be how do you change your technique going from area to area because you can't use Man. the same thing that you use in paranormal as you do in sky watching right. for ufos right the only the only thing that I try to take with me on that. Like the only thing that kind of crosses over is the fact that you just have to continue to move forward. Like no matter how scared you are, like I will tell you this right now, my friend, the one thing, the one thing that terrifies me more than anything is aliens. The idea of aliens, oh, UFOs. On. I'm telling you, bro. Like, so my mother uh, lives in Omaha, Nebraska. 
one night I was actually staying at her house and I went outside. It was about three o'clock in the morning. I'm standing in her driveway, smoking a cigarette. And I see something up in the sky. Whatever this was, was fairly low to the ground. It was definitely a disc type of shape to it. But in the middle, there was like a ring in the middle of this disc and it was emitting like a bluish greenish type of light and it was spinning. And I mean spinning very, very fast. Now, whatever then happened, like I only observed this for maybe six to eight seconds tops and then it zips out of existence. And I mean faster than I could even fathom that fast. And it's literally like it blinked out of existence. What's funny about it is as I'm standing there and I'm seeing this, like when you were a little kid, did you ever get in trouble <laughs> like by mom and dad where like they catch your hand in the cookie jar type of thing and you know, you're busted. <laughs> you know? oh, yeah. You're like, Oh crap. It was that. <sighs> it was a very internal primal carnal feeling inside of me that said, dude, you're not supposed to see this. Whatever this is, you're not supposed to be observing this at all. And I, I, I almost felt guilty or in trouble in some way for seeing this. Man, whatever that was, like, scared me to my core. And I ultimately believe that, yeah, like, there are probably millions of different things out there that we have no idea, right? Um, some of these beings or what have you may absolutely want to be here to spread kindness, light, education, you know, some form of knowledge in some way, shape or form to further, um, further the populace. But I do think that there are some out there with the exact opposite of intention and could care less about us. You know, we're almost like the ant under the magnifying glass, you know, um, and where they just don't care um, what they would do. Um, I don't know, man, what it is about the idea of aliens, but dude, <laughs> it is absolutely terrifying to me. Ah, they're not that bad. They're not that bad. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Not everybody <laughs> gets whittled. Not everybody gets whittled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, it's crazy though. It's absolutely crazy. So, and I, I torture myself, man, because I still, I still like to research, you know, aliens and different sightings and happenings and things like that. Like, have you ever gone back and like read through the transcripts from the Apollo 11 mission? Like some of the most fascinating things were said just between like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, just those two gentlemen alone, some of the things that they saw, some of the things that they photographed while on the moon. Um, they were, you know, talking about being observed by an alien spacecraft that was on this other side of a crater that was just landing and observing almost like, okay, what are these guys up to? And then like taking off, but they got pictures of it. Absolutely phenomenal. They're also talking about different things that they're hearing that is moving underneath their feet, almost suggesting that the moon itself would be hollow in some way, shape, or form, which I know is a very, uh, is another topic uh, that we could probably speak on for days. Um, but interesting things like almost 100% flat out telling you there are other things going on and here we are as as a world populace still scratching our heads saying i wonder if there's aliens out there well you're darn right there are you know it's right there it's literally on on the internet on nasa's website for anybody to read it's all right there <laughs> you know what i'm saying absolutely phenomenal stuff but I just don't know how I feel about it. So again, I, I, I torture myself with this stuff, right? <laughs> well, it, it's heavy for a lot of people, man. It's heavy for people to try and even grasp their arms around because it is so far away from their own reality. 
And yet now we exactly. have government agencies from the military to the around the Pentagon announcing that they've been yeah. covering this stuff for years. Yeah, it's a whole new Absolutely world. Absolutely amazing, amazing stuff. It's <laughs> I love talking to my grandparents about this stuff. You know what I mean? Because they're like the old timers, right? And they're like, "Oh no, that's bullcrap. No way in heck that's ever going to happen." And here you do, you have these government agencies, these officials going on record saying in a very public way, no, this is mm, what we've been looking into. <laughs> Just like kind of talking to them about it and kind of seeing their mouths drop, right? <laughs> yeah, it's nice when you can uh, provide that newspaper article for grandma and grandpa and say, see, told you these aliens were real. Told you they were here. I told you. I told you. <laughs> Finally, the kid wins one. That's right. That's right. It's about time, too. <laughs> we got about six and a half minutes before we go to break here. Josh Hurd is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. When you were going out in the forest, you were looking for some type of these cryptid creatures. Have you ever been stalked by what you believe is any of these? Honestly, man, like that's that's kind of how I felt that night, right? When I was hearing all this stuff and like <clears throat> at one point and this was i guess this was kind of like the most jarring right because yeah you've got rocks and things that are landing right behind you um and quite intentionally missing you um which i mean if one of these things would have hit me like in the head or whatever oh i would have been knocked out cold guaranteed um but it was the smell it was the smell that was associated with it. And it kept getting stronger and stronger. And it was almost as if like you take that wet dog smell, but it was almost like if it was a wet dog that had been rolling around in really nasty garbage. Um, it was that kind of a smell. It was very putrid um, of a smell. And that is then when I, your blood runs cold a little bit, but I would absolutely suggest that, yes, whatever this was, uh, whether it was Sasquatch or what have you, was definitely, it knew what I was up to, and it already had been following me around for sure. Like, kind of like what you just suggested, like a like a being stalked, right? It is kind of an intense feeling. Dude. You feel, it's and amazing then, I mean, how small you feel. Yes, exactly. And that was just it, man. And like, at the end of the day, nobody knows. Like, you you talk Sasquatch and all of that, and some people are like, "Oh no, like they're just a, a natural creature, right?" And it's like, okay, I get it. Um, other people would suggest that it's something like interdimensional in nature, which is fascinating. To, to entertain as well. But it's like, you still don't know, you know what's going on here. Um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, if you've been, if you're walking out in the woods or whatever, there's a fair chance if you have like mountain lions or anything like that around your area, there's a fair chance that they have been following you for at least 20 to 30 minutes. I'm like, what? Like, that's terrifying to me, right? Um, and so I can only imagine then with, with something like Sasquatch, who I would also then assume would have some form of a higher type of intelligence, especially uh, when it comes to playing hide-and-seek, apparently. <laughs> um, like, having something like that follow you around, it, it's not an easy feeling to digest. That is for sure. I've had it happen twice. Oh my God, bro! Seriously, it's not fun. It, it, it's actually, it's, uh. it's really eerie. It's really eerie. And I remember last summer watching my buddy Mark pull his rifle off his shoulders. And Mark is yeah. a guy where he's never believed in any of this. He's been a hunter his entire life, been a tracker and a hunting guy wow. for the last thirty years. He knows his wow. areas. He knows his prints. And yep. when he pulled his rifle off of his shoulder, it was it was eerie. 
And the only thing he yeah. says, is, and he said it on this show, and I'm paraphrasing here, is he said, I don't know what it was, but I know it was trying to make noise. Let me know it was here and that it was bipedal. Wow. So he could, uh, oh my gosh, man. See, that's impressive. See, I want knowledge like that, especially out in the field like that. I want to be able to know, okay, yeah, whatever that was, was trying to make noise. It was bipedal. I would love to have that information at my disposal. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I I don't blame you. I I think we would all want that. It's just a matter of trying to make sure that you don't get yourself killed either. Because I don't know about your area, but in my area, there's a lot of animals that can harm you and or kill you. From absolutely. grizzly bears to cougars. Yep, absolutely. And we don't really have the, the bears or anything like that. Uh, that's for sure. I mean, the most the most lethal thing, I guess, that we do have around here would be the mountain lions. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not happy at the best of times. That's just dead, man. They're just not. <laughs> it's best just to leave them alone. Every day is a bad day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you wake up cranky. Every day is a Monday morning at 9.06, and right. you started work at 8.30. Right. And you're still in rush hour traffic. That's a life of being a cougar. That's it. That's so it. I love it. What do you do? What do you do? You're just pissed off because you, you're a cat and you can be. Yeah, exactly. But, man, like, and I, I will say that, you know, when Dave and I went out, like that was the one thing that struck me, I guess, is we were out there looking for a light, looking for a disembodied light that's sporadic at best. And we end up having all of these different encounters or whatever, you know, the UFO stuff. And the, like when he started talking, when Orville was walking us around and started talking about the possibility of, of Sasquatch, like I laughed. You know what I mean? I was giggling because I didn't believe him at all because like, okay, what else do you have going on out here, man? You know, is Elvis going to walk through? Like what's, what's going on? It's like, it's absolutely crazy. It's ludicrous. You know? Absolutely. My friend, I'm going to get you to hold on right there. Josh Hurd is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Talking everything paranormal, cryptid. We'll get weird as we only got another half hour, Josh. Let's turn up the woo, shall we? Here's Spaced Out Radio Hour 3 coming up. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. At spacedoutradio.com, we have a little bit of everything for you to stay up late. So while you're there, check out our SOR Newswire, where our team brings you stories of the weird and strange to the WTF from around the globe. News on Bigfoot, UFOs, paranormal, Darwinian-type crime tales. It's the stories that the mainstream media usually won't touch. Well, we got them all on the SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Come hang 
out with Spaced Out Radio, where we own the night. This is Carl. You can follow Dave on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and during the show, use the hashtag Spaced Out Radio to chat with us live. On Instagram, at Dave Scott S-O-R. On Facebook, give our page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. S-O-R archives are free on YouTube, at Spaced Out Radio. Come join us, or I will come join you. See you at your window. Find your escape where time has no limits. It's about living today and cherishing the heritage of yesterday. A spirit of adventure for what is new with the nostalgia of the past. Your timepiece is a reflection of who you are. Life surrounded by beauty from the world around us to the soul within. EscapeWatches.com There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. The Call of the Wild is in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is one of the hottest bars and restaurants in the city. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose will rock you like a hurricane all night long. Great food with everything on the menu at $6.95. Near the corner of Nelson and Granville, get your horns up and come rock with us. The Moose Vancouver, the official rocking bar of Spaced Out Radio. Canada's largest UFO conference is ready to roll in Toronto this September 21st and 22nd at the Alien Cosmic Expo. This year is about the experience. Listen to the stories of Dave Scott, Travis Walton, Paula Harris, Grant Cameron, Ryan Stacey, Richard Dolan, Leslie Mitchell-Clark, and more. Get your tickets now at aliencosmicexpo.com. Hey fans, it's Dave Scott. Do I have something for you to check out? A great documentary about legendary Mexican investigative journalist Jaime Mossan and his search for the truth about UFOs. Beyond the spectrum, Mossan's UFO files can be found on Amazon Prime. It's free to watch if you're a member. You might even hear me in it. So check out Beyond the Spectrum only on Amazon Prime. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Are you having encounters with the paranormal, supernatural, or ufological that you cannot explain? Look no further than the SOR Sightlines Report, brought to you by the Experiencer Support Association. This is Ryan Stacy, head of the research association, TESSA. Soon on the Spaced Out Radio website, you'll be able to file your reports and have them researched for you. We are independent and ready to help Spaced Out Radio listeners today. From the Mile High Mountains of Colorado to all of you around the world, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I invite you to stick around SpacedOutRadio.com for Saturday and Sunday nights where I host Spaced Out Weekend. Let me take you on a wild ride of weird and strange topics from ghosts and ETs to remote viewing, psychic phenomena, and so much more. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time on Spaced Out Weekend, where we own the night. On the first Tuesday of every month, I encourage you to come along for a journey with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You. Together, we will take a look at how to access the highest expression of yourself and change your life, consciousness, ET contact, health, and wellness. We can talk about it all. So come along for a spiritual ride with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You, only on Spaced Out Radio. 
the freedom to post what you want, when you want. That's the social media freedom you need. Social Media Freedom is the free app in your app store. No need to worry about going to jail or being shadow banned any longer. It's the freedom to say what you feel. The freedom to know Big Brother isn't watching. It's the way social media is supposed to be. Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Download from your app store today. We are getting ready to relaunch the SOR Space Travelers Club at space.radio.com. For $5 a month, you can join us for a plethora of features found nowhere else. Hang out in a private chat room during the show and after party. You can check out some exclusive content and a store specifically for you, as well as a private listener forum where you can post your thoughts, stories, and pictures. The SOR Space Travelers Club, coming soon to spacedoutradio.com. Come get spooked at the 4th Annual Forest Moon Paracon in Cedro Woolley, Washington, Saturday, September 28th. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot. Speakers include Mike Morin and Jason Jordan, R. Keith Andrews, and Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. There will be workshops and a VIP roundtable. Get early bird tickets now at fmparacon.com. you like to connect with us head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info now back to dave scott and sor welcome back to the third and final hour of spaced out radio tonight i am your host dave scott thank you so much for joining us tomorrow night on the show eric altman cryptid investigator joins us 906 pacific 1206 a.m eastern at spacedoutradio.com hi to everyone listening in on uprn 107.7 fm in new orleans kzfx 93.7 fm in ridgecrest california wqee 99.1 fm in noonan georgia kdnf am 1560 dangerfield texas and down in reedsport oregon kdun am 1030 on the digital side Hi to everyone listening in on Revolution Radio. Happy birthday, Jareth Barreth. Glad you're listening in. Don't forget, you can check out all of our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor. Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Thysiastery. Thysiastery is your password. Make sure you use it wisely, Space Travelers, as a clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where you can read up on the SOR Newswire provided by Captain Shirk, listen to the show live. The Gavinator will have new features coming very, very soon. For the final time tonight, we introduce paranormal investigator Josh Hurd. His website, joshherd.net, is a documentarian as well. You can go to his website to find the documentary. Very, very cool. Highly suggest you do. Josh, welcome back. Thank you much, man. You were investigating a very interesting case about a spirit in St. Louis that seemed to want to communicate. Dude, so, like, I'm always fascinated with just, like, weird stories, right? And this one, for whatever reason, man, this one really just grabbed me. Um, so, so, I mean, it grabbed me so much that I ended up doing a whole, like, a documentary film on it um, called Patience. And <clears throat> it was, so I'm reading through the story or whatever. So, basically, it was, like, you know, right around the time of the spiritualist movement in the early like 19 teens right uh in st louis missouri there was this housewife um now her name was pearl curran um her husband or whatever was a very successful businessman but i mean gone quite often so i'm uh, i'm only assuming she's probably bored or something right but her and her friend um who was a neighbor at the time They would sit around and they would, you know, as many people did back then, they would play with a Ouija board. And one day they're, they're playing around with this Ouija board and a, and a message comes through and it says many moons ago, I lived again. I come patience worth is my name. And that was it right now. Apparently they, they kept talking to patients. 
and communicating. And apparently Patience had aspirations of becoming an author back when she was alive. Um, however, her life supposedly uh, was cut short. She said she was murdered um, by Indians is what she said. Now, there is no, there is no record of any of this uh, happening now. Um, but regardless, uh, aspirations of being a writer and through then Pearl, she starts to dictate books. I mean, word, uh, literally letter by letter through the Ouija board. She then does numerous books, poems, even plays and things like that, all via the Ouija board and Pearl Curran. Now, it got to the point where then, uh, you know, the word had gotten out. Pearl is summoning and, and talking to this, this spirit. And so the Currens would invite people, the public, basically, into their home to watch these sessions, these writing sessions go down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, now, they never charged admission or anything like that, um, which I will say kind of helps the case um, that there is no real financial gain in all of this. Um, but it was fascinating to me. And so I, uh, I scooped my brother up and I, I was like, Hey man, we're going to St. Louis. And he's like, what? <laughs> but, so we cruised to St. Louis and uh, ended up going down to their, uh, the historical society and all that stuff that they have there. And they still have the original books, the original patients worth collection is right there. And it is amazing, fascinating stuff. Like I'm a history freak anyway. And so to be there and to be able to like feel the books and, and smell the books, you know, and really touch history, it's just an amazing thing. man. Absolutely great. But I love that story, you know? How did this spirit communicate? How did it, how did it want it? How did you figure out it wanted to tell its story? I see. Do you mean to me? In general, to you or in general? See, <clears throat> that's, a, that's another thing is like where or how these certain stories or whatever, like come. And it's, it's, Honestly, I swear it's happenstance, or at least it appears to be happenstance, right? Um, but I would suggest, like, if, if this were true, if Pearl Curran was actually being able to, to do this, to, to transcribe these books via a Ouija board, all at the command of a spirit, that is something more fascinating than I have ever seen or two, this could be the biggest hoax that has ever been perpetuated against this paranormal community. You know what I'm saying? And what's fascinating to me is it's such a cool story that hardly anybody knows. And that's what ultimately drove me to, to want to tell this story and really examine this. Like who was Pearl? And, what was fascinating about this is the words that she was writing because the words she was writing were gorgeous, beautiful prose. Um, if like by today's standards or whatever, you would, you would say these were critically acclaimed for sure. You know what I mean? Um, like New York times bestseller list type of stuff that she was producing. However, Pearl only had, I believe like a middle school type of education or whatever, like basically from everything that I've read concerning Pearl Curran is she was very uneducated. Um, you know, she kind of married into money and all of that. She really wasn't, didn't do much to tell you the truth, but there's no way the people that knew her, the people um, that were associated with her said, there's absolutely no way these are Pearl's words. She doesn't speak like this. She has never spoken like this. Um, she was writing certain things about certain areas because Patience Worth claims to have come from England. 
um, so, uh, specifically Dorset, England. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, she was describing the landscape and she was also describing certain uh, landmarks and things of that nature. Now, there was absolutely no uh, no internet <laughs> you know, back then. Like she wasn't just uh, pulling this information uh, easily. But for her to be able to to describe the landscape and all of this stuff is so much so that somebody, there was a, there was a person that wrote for the newspaper in St. Louis who thought she was absolutely full of it to the point where then he went to England and he was going to check this out for himself to see if, if this was actually true. And to a T he said, she had described everything factually, uh, so he came back a believer, started following her around like a lost puppy dog, apparently, too, because he absolutely believed in everything that she had to say. It's fascinating stuff, man. Absolutely fascinating. So if you weren't sure if it was this pearl, do you think it was right. a spirit that was trying to maybe suck you into something that was more malevolent? It's quite possible. Absolutely. And I do know, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's absolutely possible that this could be something more, right? Um, okay. Especially when you start to talk about the Ouija board. And I mean, there is a certain stigma that's kind of attached to the Ouija board, you know. Um, now, Hollywood has helped a lot with that as well. But there's a lot of, uh, a lot of fact in there as well. Um, back in that time... You know, the Ouija board was to them just like for us turning on the television, you know, for entertainment. Um, this is what they did after dinner. They just sit around and <laughs> summon the devil, I guess. <laughs> but it is interesting, um, you know, because it always makes you wonder, are you being manipulated in some way, shape or form? Unbeknownst to her, obviously. Um, and again, like she was, you know, probably couldn't think her way out of a paper bag. Um, so somewhat of an easy target as well, I would suggest. It's, it's fairly interesting. Mm -hmm. For sure. So what's your thoughts on the Ouija board? You know, <clears throat> for me, I guess it's all about intention, right? Now, the Ouija board itself, you know, it, there's nothing really evil about it. It's a, it's a piece of, you know, pressed board and a planchette. But when you sit down at the Ouija board with the intention of you know, making contact or communicating in some way with something, you're opening a door. Well, who's to say that, you know, great Uncle George or whatever is going to walk through or somebody claiming to be great uncle George, maybe not with the best of intentions, right? But you're sitting down and you're asking questions with the intent of communication. Now you're also doing the exact same thing when you're maybe just walking around with say like a K2 meter and asking yes or no questions with that. The intention's all the same, you know, it's just your tool is different whatever it is. Um, for example, um, so I, you know, just to kind of put it into perspective, I really don't see a difference then. Um, it's a question and answer session, no matter how you slice it, right? Um, no matter what you're using. However, like with the stigma and all that stuff, like even for a brush with evil, um, one of the things that we did, like when you walk into Workman's Chapel, one of the first things that you will see on the floor is a very large circle. Now, inside of the circle is a triangle, and inside of the triangle is what we would call like the eye of providence or the all seeing eye, right? Now, around on the outside of the circle are very odd, um, they're almost like glyphs or something like that. Um, the point of this uh, triangle is facing due north. Like whoever did this uh, was practicing something for sure. 
what that is exactly, I'm not quite positive on, um, but they did their homework. I will say that. So they were practicing something for sure. Um, <clears throat> but again, I'm just unsure of what that is. But I decided to be kind of a smart butt. And I said, you know, for the first night of doing this, again, we did four nights actively trying to poke the bear, right? And on this first night, we sat right down in the middle of that circle and put a Ouija board right in the center of it and tr attempted to do a Ouija board session right there. How'd it go? Terribly. Nothing happened. <laughs> like, it was so boring. It's like, it was so boring, in fact, that I barely even used any of it. But I wanted to show that we did this, right? Again, like, some of us were really into it and wanted to do it. Others, like Blake, um, he, he just was like, I don't want any part of this at all. Um, it's that stigma, man, you know, that's, that's put on by, by Hollywood and, and all of the talk of like Zozo and all of this stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, do I believe it? Maybe a little bit. Sure. I believe enough, but I've never met Zozo. You know what I'm saying? Like, so until I do, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to call BS on that. But that's just kind of how my personality is, right? Well, I think all of us have to kind of push that lever a little bit within ourselves. I think so too, man. And that's, that's it right there. That is it right there. Everybody has their own threshold, right? Everybody has their own moment where they say, that's enough. That's it. I cannot go any farther. But... I swear to you that just beyond that threshold, just on the other side of that threshold are your answers. That's where you're going to get the good stuff. So I am constantly pushing people all the time. When we did a brush with evil too, this was all pretty much my wife's brainchild. When she was in Iraq doing uh, the army thing, she was in combat stress. So she really knows the inner workings of the mind itself um, and kind of what will make you tick, right? And she basically <clears throat> had a series of experiments and she pulled us all aside one by one, which was very odd, but she was interviewing us and she was asking a very general battery of questions, you know, Oh, as an investigator, what do you use the most as far as your senses go? Um, your sense of sight, your sense of hearing, what, you know, what do you use the most? Whatever your answer was, she was about to take away from you. She was going to put you in a room by yourself in a very haunted location and <laughs> she was going to take away whatever sense you say you use the most. This was terrifying. One of the most terrifying experiences of my life, really. Um, but a really cool experiment, too, especially when it comes to perception and how perception truly is your reality, no matter what. But I'm telling you, pushing yourself more and more. And I do this all the time with my guys. I put them in some of the dumbest situations imaginable. But it's all, there's always a method to the madness. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. We only got about five minutes left with you tonight. And this has flown on by, Josh. Yeah. And I want to say really thank you for bro. coming on, man. Oh, man, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you. Oh, no problem. In your next year, two years, five years, ten years, what do you want to accomplish in this field? What is the ultimate goal for you? Uh -huh. Any form of answer that would then, and I'll, and I'll take it a step farther, that would then progress the field farther. What I ultimately want, and I think a lot of us want this too, is for people to stop thinking um, that we're so crazy, right? So... I want, like, 
you know, with the influx of like paranormal shows and all of that stuff, it's being thrust into the mainstream, right? The paranormal itself has been, or it has become something now that we can talk about, uh, especially like around the water cooler at work, right? It's become the norm. Um, but we're only halfway there. Like we really need to continually push and progress this field forward in a positive direction. You know what I mean? Like you always read these articles like, Oh, ghost hunters break into this place and burn it down. And it's like, Oh God, like that just set the field back decades. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because now they just think we break into these places and, and try to investigate. Um, but yeah, like ultimately that's the goal is somehow keep progressing the field forward. Um, asking the difficult questions, doing the, the experiments and really trying to find that antecedent of activity, right. Or potential paranormal happenings for sure. A lot of people have been saying that for the last 50 to a hundred years. I know. Do you think with with a couple of minutes left, do you think that technology will lead us the way or refinding our own spirituality and spiritual connection? I would absolutely think like, yeah, the technology is great, but at the same time, it's kind of hit the stalemate, right? Like it's kind of just kind of, I don't know, fizzled out a little bit just because of the simple fact that the only thing we're doing is making the exact same piece of equipment just with bigger lights and bigger sounds and more fun things to look at because it's pretty or, Oh, that looks cool. So I'm going to spend $600 on it, which is ludicrous, right? Finding ourselves and really truly understanding and opening ourselves up, I think is the absolute key to all of this. Um, I, again, like the tech is great. And I think with the proper direction, it could absolutely progress the field, but it's not going to be like, it's all, it's really weird though, bro. And I'm sure you feel this too, but it's almost like a spiritual type of awakening going on right now. Right. Like with everybody, you know, like everybody is saying, <clears throat> all these really beautiful things. Um, yeah, there's a lot of bull crap and hate and all this crap going on at the same time. And to heck with that. Really focus on the positive stuff because there's some amazing positive things going on at the same time, you know? And I think we are the key to unlocking all of this, not the newest tech gizmo or gadget. I agree with you very much. We got one minute, my friend. Josh, tell everybody where they can find your documentary and what it's called. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so if you go to joshherd.net, that will take you over to um, basically every film that I've ever done, the the good, the bad, the everything. So, yeah, um, if you go over to Vidi Space, which is V-I-D-I dot space, which is a cool new network uh, that was started up by Nick Groff and Elizabeth Saint, um, I'm on there as well. All the docs are on there as well. Also, if you guys are like Amazon prime, uh, subscribers or anything like that, you can find it on there as well. Wonderful. Really appreciate you taking the time. This is the first time we've had a chance to talk with you. And, and I really hope, uh, man, that we could do this again, because this was a lot of fun with you. Oh, I had a blast, man. Thank you so much for asking me. Not a problem. Not a problem. Josh heard everybody on Spaced Out Radio, his website, once again, joshherd.net. Coming up here as we start to round home, round for home, that is, we have the SOR Newswire and the Thought of the Day. So stay tuned. Lots of show left on Spaced Out Radio.
Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best $5 a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. Are you having encounters with the paranormal, supernatural, or ufological that you cannot explain? Look no further than the SOR Sightlines Report, brought to you by the Experiencer Support Association. This is Ryan Stacy, head of the Research Association, TESSA. Soon on the Space Out Radio website, you'll be able to file your reports and have them researched for you. We are independent and ready to help Spaced Out Radio listeners today. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Hey, Spaced Out Radio listeners, it's Dave Scott. I want you to check out a great documentary I'm involved in called Beyond the Spectrum, Mossan's UFO Files. Directed by Darcy Weir, the film follows Jaime Mossan's journey for mainstream journalistic truth in ufology in Mexico. Beyond the Spectrum can be found on Amazon Prime. If you're a member, watch it free. It's worth the watch. Come get spooked at the 4th Annual Forest Moon Paracon in Cedar Woolley, Washington, Saturday, September 28th. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot. Speakers include Mike Morin and Jason Jordan, R. Keith Andrews, and Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. There will be workshops and a VIP roundtable. Get early bird tickets now at fmparacon.com. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. A timepiece is a reflection of who you are, and what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Coming up this September 21st and 22nd, all UFO eyes will be focused on Toronto for the 4th Annual Alien Cosmic Expo. Come listen to some of the biggest names and experiencers in ufology. Travis Walton, Paul Hellyer, Richard Dolan, Paula Harris, Grant Cameron, Randy Kramer, and Spaced Out Radio's own Dave Scott. Tickets are on sale now at aliencosmicexpo.com. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. 
every night on Space Out Radio, we have places for you to hang out. Hi, this is Carl. Join our SOR Space Travelers group on Facebook for live chat. On Twitter, using hashtag Spaced Out Radio, you can also join us in our Spreaker chat room. Check us out on Instagram at Dave Scott SOR. All of our archives are free on YouTube at Spaced Out Radio. By the way, I'll be watching you at your window until you do. Bye! Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. Looking for the stories of the strange and weird that you will find hard to find anywhere else? Check out the SOR Newswire on our website. Our writers, led by Captain Shirk, are scouring the world for the oddest and most bizarre stories we can find. Everything from weird crime to suspenseful and paranormal. We're working hard for you to bring you the most intriguing news of your day. Check out the SOR Newswire at spacedoutradio.com today. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, hanging out with all of you as we start to wrap things up. But first, I want to remind you, if you've missed most of this show or others, go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Hit that subscribe button for me if you wouldn't mind. And the Gavinator is working on our website, spacedoutradio.com. We've got a bunch more features coming very soon, but for now, you can read up on the SOR Newswire and listen to the show live only on our website. Let's get to the news of the night. The news is always changing, which is why we give you the SOR Newswire at the back end of every show where we get into the weird, the strange, those head scratchers. But sometimes it gets kind of cool. All our news put together by Captain Gail Shirk, our news director extraordinaire. We're going to start off here in British Columbia. So a man in a suburb of Coquitlam, which is about 35 minutes east of Vancouver, left a West Vancouver car dealership owning a brand-new 2019 McLaren 600 LT supercar. The 39-year-old owned the car for 10 minutes, 10 minutes, before he was pulled over by police officers. Yeah, he went through a radar trap, traveling 160 kilometers per hour, along Highway 1, near 15th Street and West Van. The speed limit was 90 kilometers an hour, so to translate for our American friends, it's 100 miles an hour in a speed zone that is about, ooh, 90, it's about 55 miles an hour. So according to police, yeah, The man allegedly stated after he was pulled over that he had just bought the high-profile car 10 minutes prior to being pulled over. His new ride, estimated at $240,000, was impounded for seven days, issued a $368 fine. That's it? 
That's it. 368 bucks. My goodness, that's cheap. He has a $240,000 car. He's going 70 kilometers an hour more than the speed limit. So about 45 miles an hour higher. While we get closer to the July long weekend, which typically means more vehicles on the road, West Vancouver police want to remind everyone to obey all speed limits and drive responsibly, said Constable Kevin Goodmurphy. Your life is worth it. Imagine that, though, paying two hundred and forty grand for a car. Ten minutes later, you lose it for seven days. What a moron. Then again, I'm sure if any of us could afford a $240,000 car, we'd press the gas pedal a little hard, too. Beautiful car, though. Totally beautiful car. I'd own that. Not going to lie. I might speed in it, too. People can call me a moron, then. Speaking of cars, for all of us who live outside of the United States, when we look in, this is what we call Murica. So, a Ford dealership in Chatham, Alabama, with every new purchase of a new or pre-owned vehicle as part of their 4th of July sales promotion, you, the lucky customer, is getting a 12-gauge shotgun, a Bible, and an American flag. Yes, Chatham Ford went viral for its God, Guns, and Freedom campaign that is running until July 31st. The dealership's general manager, Kobe Palmer, talks about the offer in a Facebook video that has now been seen more than 60,000 times. In the video, Palmer cocks his rifle in one hand, holds a Bible in the other, while standing in front of a pickup truck with an American flag draped over its tailgate. It does not get any more America than that, people. Palmer says the sales team came up with the promo to align with his town's values. It's a safe community. They are very proud of their country, and almost everybody here likes to hunt. He said, insisting the 4th of July inspired campaign means it's patriotic and not political. The 29-year-old sales manager went on to say, We don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. It's not like we're just walking around handing out guns. He said the dealership partnered with certified firearm dealers in Alabama and Mississippi. When a customer buys a vehicle, they'll be given a certificate to be taken to an arms dealer, who will then conduct a background check. Once the background check clears, the customer must also present a bill of sale from the purchase of the car to get the gun free of charge. We're supporting the local community, he says. Anyone that doesn't agree 100% with what we are portraying, we're not trying to force our beliefs on anybody. We respect anybody that disagrees, no matter how vehemently they do. Palmer says customers are not required to take their giveaway if they do want to buy a car from the dealership. You must be 18 years or older and legally own or to legally own a firearm in the state of Alabama. Hmm. I wonder what Ford has to say about that. Do they have any pull? I don't know. Scientists exploring an area that is thought to contain an ancient lost city in Honduras, in one of the rainforests there, have come across something cool. They have discovered a vast ecosystem of rare and endangered species, including some animals, that were supposedly extinct. The team was exploring the so-called City of the Jaguar area within the supposed complex of the legendary Lost White City. This lost ancient settlement is also known as Ciudad Blanca, or the White City of the Monkey God. Ancient folklore from the 16th century tells the tale of the monkey god who resided in the city and preyed on human women. All right, cool. But the cool animals are there. The ones that we thought were gone are there. Scientists managed to discover 180 species of plants, 
just under 250 species of insects, 198 bird species, and dozens more animals. These animals included the rare pale-faced bat, which hasn't been seen in Honduras for over 75 years, and potentially a new species of fish. They also came across unusual eyelash viper snakes and red-eyed tree frogs. The researchers wrote in their report, many of these species are uncommon or rare in other parts of the range due to habitat loss, degradation, hunting, and other pressures. It's one of the few areas remaining in Central America where ecological and evolutionary processes remain intact. The Honduran government is continuing and committed to protecting this area and allowing further scientific study there. Research continues to try and find the exact location and conclusive evidence of the White City. That's actually kind of cool. Real cool. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Down in Houston, Texas, inside a locked vault at Johnson Air Space Center is treasure few have ever seen, fewer have even seen touched. The restricted lab is home to hundreds of pounds of moon rocks collected by Apollo astronauts close to 50 years ago. And for the first time in decades, NASA is about to open some of the pristine samples and let geologists take a crack at them using 21st century technology. What better way to mark the Apollo mission's 50th anniversary is what the role is all about. It's sort of a coincidence that we're opening them in the year of the anniversary, explained NASA's Apollo sample curator, Ryan Ziegler, covering head to toe in a white protective suit while matching fabric boots, gloves, and hats. Yes, he is fashionable. But certainly the anniversary increases the awareness and the fact that we're going back to the moon. With the golden anniversary of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin's feet fast approaching, yeah, the flat earthers aren't going to like this. Their learner module, Eagle, landed on July 20th, 1969 on the Sea of Tranquility. The moon is red hot now, though, and there is talk about trying to colonize it. After decades of flip-flopping between moon and Mars as the next big astronaut destination, NASA, NASA aims to put the astronauts on the lunar surface again by 2024. And at the White House's direction... Of course, President Trump, though, prefers to talk about Mars because it's sexier. So anyways, getting back to this Ziegler dude, his job is to preserve what the 12 moonwalkers brought back from 1969 through 72. Samples totaling about 842 pounds of rock and ensure scientists will get the best possible samples for their study. My question is, why did the NASA hold on to this for 50 years? Like, there's some pretty darn good scientists out there. May not work for NASA, but why have them in a vault for 50 years? I don't, I, and, I'm, and I'm not trying to say that sarcastically. Are they valuable? Because there's so few here on Earth? Afraid that they may get stolen and put on the black market or, you know, Christie's auction house or something like that? I really don't know. I really don't know. Curious about that. But about time they are going to open it up. It really is. Four men have been arrested after being caught smuggling over 5,000 live baby turtles and 30 pounds of drugs into Malaysia inside their luggage. Yeah, Malaysian authorities arrested four Indian men and seized more than 30 pounds of drugs at the Kuala Lumpur airport. Senior customs officials say the agents found a total of 5,255 red-eared slider baby turtles kept in small baskets from the luggage of two Indian nationals who flew in from China. He said the men had no permits for the turtles and told investigators that the terrapins, estimated to be worth about $12,700, were meant to be sold as pets in India. Cute little guys. 
The two men are expected to be charged and could face up to five years in jail and a fine. The red-eared sliders are one of the world's most commonly traded turtles meant for pet and meat markets. Permits are required as young turtles are turtles, pardon me, are susceptible to carrying salmonella and pose health concerns. Separately, officials said the 30 pounds of methamphetamine worth around $174,000 hidden in special compartments in boxes that were hand-carried by the two men. Yeah. Malaysia. You're talking about a country I don't believe that even allows you to chew gum? You're trying to get meth in there? Yeah. Both men are expect are believed to be drug mules and are expected to be charged and face the death penalty if convicted. So never mind the turtles. Never mind the turtles, but you're seeking death in Malaysia for carrying the meth. Meth equals death in Malaysia. We got time for one more. It's a Facebook story. As the big company has announced, it will hand over the identities of French users suspected of posting hate speech on its platform to French courts. In a world first, the tech giant has agreed to hand over the identification data of hate speech suspects on its platform to judges. France's Minister for Digital Affairs, Cedric O, said yesterday... Facebook will share the IP addresses of accounts containing homophobic, racist, or anti-Semitic content, a ministerial aid confirmed. Internet protocol addresses, or IP addresses, allow investigators to identify and locate computers used to make such posts. Facebook's commitment concerns only France, an aid to digital affairs minister Cedric O said. Mark Zuckerberg, in the meantime, met with French President Emmanuel Macron in May to discuss ways to combat hateful content. Wow. In one way, I agree with this. Because, you know, people got to be smarter. People got to show more love. And there's no room for this racial crap anymore. There really isn't. Or homophobia or anything like that. There's no room for that. But free speech. Now, yes, I'm generalizing that. I'm curious what all of you think. Hit us up on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Let me know. Scary times. Scary, scary times. Thought of the day happens every night at this time where we post a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages, then read your responses on the air. Because we love the audience participation around here. So today's thought of the day is as follows. What do you think causes paranormal activity to occur? Start off with Dave here. Says having two normal activities. Carl, nothing. There is no such thing. Brian, these are questions, not thoughts, Dave. You should have thoughts and questions. It's my thought of the day. I can have a question if I want. Darn you. Heidi, I think there are places on our planet where, to put it plainly, the veil is thin. The veil being electromagnetic frequencies, which fluctuate in a vastly different way than other areas. In these places, fragments of other dimensions are visible. There's a whole spectrum of light we can't see. Why is it not true for the rest of the frequencies and the secrets they give access to? I don't know. Tony. Photonic energy. Catherine. Hormones. Kimmy thinks it's portals. Exactly, Kimmy. Exactly. What's the password for? Exactly. Bobby. Intense emotions from those that have not yet let go, but died. Jade. 
A good single malt 15-year-old scotch drunk in a 100-plus-year-old house. That sounds like a party, Jade. Gabe, I think we do. Our actions and energy attract these entities. Heather, some very good comments regarding portals and energy. I could personally justify those. When it happens, to me, it's still a mystery. Maybe one day I'll find out, or has it been happening all my life? The veil is definitely thin in some areas. Janine, nothing causes it. It's just their reality, to quote the guess who. Godspeed, Mother Nature. Jody believes ghosts cause it. Wow. Never known. Paranormal? Ghosts? No. The Ukrainian watermelon, Ronnie Maniak, has weighed in. Eating pickled eggs, brown beans, beer, and x lax I don't know what that means, but that sounds dangerous. Robert, a dialogue with energy. Francesca, peanut butter gallery, number one, it's all theology right now anyways. Two, any rate show host, radio or TV, has read the book of someone they are going to interview. Three, Dave is actually that good, but I think should read the book. But with two and a half hours on the air, you should be able to cover a lot more than what's in your book, especially since it's not for sale anymore. She's talking about Barry Taff. My hair is that good. Uncle Dale and his power stash get the final word of the night. The big question is, what do you think causes paranormal activities to occur? Dale's power stash's answer? Paranormals. Way to hit it hard, Uncle Dale. Way to hit it hard. Big thank you to everybody. Take a part in the thought of the day. We'll do another one tomorrow. It'll be found on my Facebook and on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Big thank you to Captain Shirk for getting all the great news together for the SOR Newswire to bring to you. It can be found at spacedoutradio.com. And a big thanks to Josh Hurd for coming on in, talking paranormal tonight. JoshHurd.net is his website. Tomorrow night on the show, we're getting into cryptids, sprites, and whatever else is strange and weird, investigator Eric Altman will join us. We'll get another Butch Wachowski update as well. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, in your cars, at work, in our chat rooms, on Twitter, at hashtag Spaced Out Radio, wherever you may be. I know you're out there somewhere. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for tuning us in tonight, telling your friends, doing your part, to make us bigger and better every single night. We're watching. Because together, my friends... Say it with me. We own the night. I will talk to you 21 hours from now. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Good night.